Here we are with part two. Uh, again, make sure that you have your layers panel open and also your brushes up. Uh, as you can see, I zoomed in here. And what I did is I, uh, I connected these lines to each other as close as I could. Uh, made sure there were no gaps. At this point, just make sure there are as few gaps around the edges of things you know you're going to want to color in. So for example, here in the eye, if for some reason this looked like this, I would want to go in and make sure it was closed because I know I'm going to want to color in the eye later. So make sure all of these lines are connected if you can. All right, That's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble later. Now I did not do the whole face on purpose because I'm trying to make this tutorial a little bit shorter. So here are the next steps for coloring. So what I'm going to do is first unlock the pick layer, click on it. What I want to do is copy the pick layer so now I have two of them. Go back to the original, lock the original, hide the original. On this copy though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out, command minus a few times. I'm going to take this pick copy, take the black arrow, click on it, and move it out of the way. The reason we're going to use it over here is that for color reference and for you know detail reference for shadows and highlights, that kind of thing, so we can still see the old one as we work. So I'm going to lock that one as well. I'm going to go back up to the ink layer. The next step with the ink layer is you're going to take the uh, black arrow selection tool, select the entire thing. Now, uh, just one little note is, you know, when you draw with these brushes, when you click on them, you'll notice that the line is on the inside of each one. See that little red um, highlighting the line? So what that means is if I click on it, I can move the anchor points and move the line. And remember, this is just a black stroke. However, if I select the entire thing, which is what I want you to do now. Take the black arrow, select the entire black drawing of ink that you did on the ink layer. Go to Object, go to Expand Appearance. Now once you go to Expand Appearance, and I look back at those same exact lines that I just looked at, you'll notice that when I take the white arrow direct selection tool now and click on it, the lines and anchor points are now on the outside of the line. So I could actually move individually the anchor point or the line itself to change the way that line looked. Okay, I'm going to do Command Z and undo a few times to get back the way it was. I'm going to do Command Zero now to get back to the original. Now, we're ready for color, so what do we do? We're going to go to the ink layer, take the ink layer, copy the ink layer. So now we have two. On the ink copy, we're going to lock it. On the original one that's underneath it, what we're going to do is go to our rectangle tool, choose a color that we think is pretty close to the color of his skin, the base color of his skin. So I'm going to take the eyedropper tool and I'm going to click on basically I would say like uh, this color right here on his cheek. So you see I come up with that color right there. Alright, then I'm going to take my rectangle tool with that color as my foreground, as my fill color, with my rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag. Now I'm only doing a portion of the face. Remember you're doing the entire face. I'm going to put the entire thing on just like that. Now what I also want to do is right click on this piece, arrange it, and make sure it gets sent to the back. Now once it's done that, we are going to go to the black arrow, this time select everything that's here, and we are going to go to Window, Pathfinder, and we're going to go to this button here which says Merge. Now once it's all merged together like that, you should be able to take your group selection tool, select all of this, right click on it, and isolate the selected group. Now when I do that, all of the pieces should be separate pieces now. Now what that means is to take that group selection tool, click away from it, click on that background piece, hit delete, and you can see the inside pieces are now their own pieces. So for example, if I go inside the eye here, these are all individual pieces, which I could then click on and change the color of to whatever I wanted to. So you're going to work start by clicking on these pieces and giving them some base colors that you would like to see. Now by accident there, I clicked on the entire piece and grabbed way too much and it turned that piece to that piece. Now, yeah, like that. So I got that piece right there. Now you'll notice in some of the pieces, like this one, I clicked on this piece right here and it's telling me it's black, but it certainly doesn't look black. So what I want to do here is edit, cut it, edit, paste it in front. And there it is. And now I can see it. And yes, indeed, it is black. 
So I could go ahead and change the color of that now. And again, you could double click your fills and make it exactly the color that you'd like. And, and you could really choose sort of the base colors there as much as you would, as much as you would like. So I'm going to try to go into some of these, just give them a little bit of color. Got to get really close for a lot of these. Real close. See, this one's telling me it's black again for these two shapes, which I know are not black. So I'm going to do the same thing. Cut or Command X and then paste in front, Command F. And then just give them a fill. Now this one right here, you'll notice that we never closed it, so it's hard to kind of get to that one. So we're going to deal with that one differently. Same thing for here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right, so some of those bases are pretty much done. And then the rest is highlights and shadows. So to do highlights and shadows, we're going to go back here by hitting back one level, this little arrow right here. So we're back to the original. You can see all of your layers. And then we're going to add one more new layer, create new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel right here. I'm going to keep that in between the ink copy and the ink layer of the basic color. So we go to this layer five. And this one you could call um, shadows or highlights or a combination of both. I'm going to call it shadows one. And what you want to do on this is take the same brush that you had used before, go over to your brushes, choose the style that you'd like, choose the size for the stroke that you would like. I'm going to do a 0.25. Take away, you have two options here. You can take away the fill and just leave a stroke. And the color of the stroke, what I would do is use the eyedropper, click on, let's say I'm going to do some skin ones. I would click on the skin color here. When I click on the skin color, you notice that it made the skin as the fill with no stroke. You could flip them with this little flip tool. So flip it so that the stroke is the one that's the same color. But now we want to make it a little darker because we're doing shadows. So double click right on it. When this comes up, go a little bit darker. Up to you how far dark you want to go on it. And then go back to that brush. And you're going to zoom in and you're going to start to throw in some shadow. Now where to put the shadow? That's when you really have to keep looking back at that original one. And see, I see a lot of shadow kind of right there. So I'm going to try to do that same sort of a thing. I can print it out for you in class if you want to kind of see more. So what I usually do is go right near the line and throw in that color. Now you can see as soon as I did it, it jumped to the ink layer and it gave me the wrong color and it's too thick and so it's a mess. So undo, lock the ink layer, click on the shadows layer. And let's just do that again where we use the eyedropper, we flip it, we choose a 0.25, we choose the same brush as before. There we go. And <clears throat> everything's looking good now. Back to my brush. Okay, and then I'm ready. I'm on the shadows one layer and I click and I drag. And you can see how it's kind of coming up. You can start a little darker if you'd like. That's up to you. Also with these, what's nice to do is kind of um, not let go when you kind of do the shadow, kind of like this. And you get this nice kind of shadow thing going. In fact, what you can also do as the second possibility for you and it doesn't have to be quite that thick. Remember, these could be done with 0.25, and they'll be just a bit thinner or less. So you can kind of work those lines till you get what you're looking for. So you can do individual lines, or you could do ones that don't stop. And you get kind of that kind of look. If you give it a fill color, so you'll notice that this stroke color now, if you go over to your swatches, if you don't see them, just go to Window swatches make sure your swatches pop up and you can see that I can take this swatch from here drag it into here and drop it so it's right there now if I go to my fill color and I use that same color so now the fill and the stroke are the same when I do an area I could do like this and when I close it up or come at least a little bit back to where I started you get this kind of a thing Right, where the inside of this now has this color. Let me see. Yep, 
that looks pretty good. The um, the stroke around the edge looks a little bit lighter, so we could kind of darken up the inside. We could darken up the outside. However, you want to kind of see it. It's going to work nicely. Um, <clears throat> some people would choose to just use the brush, make that interesting shape wherever you think it should be, and then kind of fill it in as you go. Because we can merge all this stuff later. So that's also an option for you. Now, you're going to have these shadows. By the way, uh, the artist that we talked about for this uses a tablet with a pen. We are using the mouse for this, so it will, it will be a little bit more difficult for you. Sorry. And um, once you got those basic kind of lines in there, remember that's just not where it's it stops. You're going to continue to add new layers, call them shadows, you know, um, two, three, four, five, whatever you want to say. And then as you go up on the stack, I would typically get lighter. So change the color, make it a lighter version, and continue to put the highlights where the highlights would be, but check back at your original to see. I see some highlights like over here and underneath. So most likely they'll kind of begin like here. And I saw some kind of underneath the eye a little bit. And then on the cheek area here. So you're going to kind of throw those in. If this looks too sharp to you, by the way, and you don't like it, you can always switch back over to your artistic ink brushes. And there's one at the bottom here. It looks a little thicker. And so when you draw with this one, you're going to get a different look. You can also click on these with the group selection tool and then go over to where it says stroke and then up at the top corner, show options. And you can, while this is clicked, you can change the corners and the caps and all the little different pieces of this so that the edge looks a little bit um, different for you, not quite as sharp. Uh, if, you, if you really want it to be circular, just change the brush again. Go to a different brush. Instead of these, try one of these circular ones and just see how that works. Now, obviously, that's a little too giant. And that has a more of a rounded edge also. So you have a bunch of options there with the brushes. You just got to kind of play them out a little bit. So continue to make your new layers. Call them shadow or highlights. Two, three, four, five. Change the colors. Make them lighter. Use whatever colors you think are going to work. Choose the kind of brush and style that you like. You can try some of these crazier brushes. That's fine. You can see what they look like, but they might not give you exactly what you were hoping for. So that's why I like to stick with these. Uh, they're a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to use. Okay. Remember, the stroke size is a big part of this. Right, and then I can just kind of fill it in. These are all on their own layers, so not a big, not a big deal. And if you ever need something to come behind something else, we could always go back to the original ink, unlock it, take a piece like this, and then move it to the top. We can literally cut it and then go to the very top, make a new layer on top of everything else, and just paste it in front. It'll be in front of that piece now. All right. If there are some big chunks of area, which I highly recommend, for example, I'm going to lock all of these except for this bottom shadow one. I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to try to use the same color that I used before. I'm going to use a brush, but this time I'm going to create a nice large area of shadow. Right? Something like that. And if I come across any of these areas that just are not working or they're too sharp, I can click on this with the black arrow and I could just use the eraser tool and erase little pieces if I need to. All right. Certainly, you can also um, go to object and expand appearance and that will help you to eliminate lines as well. 
could always add in little pieces. If you keep getting those sharp lines and you can't get rid of them, you could switch to a different brush, like a round brush like this one, and just kind of fill in that spot. All right, to kind of help you out. There's all different brushes. You got to kind of work with the brushes to get what you're looking for. Uh, when this is fully done, I'll show you how to do a little bit of the hair. If you get stuck with hair, it's going to come out real, real nice at the end. And, uh, and then we'll worry about the background later. All right. Remember, brush tool for this project. Only the brush tool. You can have as many curves, lines, and layers as you need.